okay so in the previous session we have come across with we have studied what are wave guides and how what are the shapes of wave guides how the wave guides are uh, going to be constructed and what are the modes of operation and advantages of wave guides characteristic of wave guides right can anybody spell what are the main characteristic characteristic of wave guide what are the important characteristic the tube wall provide distributed in the tank Huh. These are bulky and heavy and expensive. Yeah, right. Good. The emptiness that the tube was from were distributed capacitors. Yeah. So, like we have studied in transmission line, here also we are having uh, distributed parameters. That is, throughout the length, we are having. Uh, parameters are distributed. okay so next we have come across with the microwave advantages can anybody spell what are the advantages very easily to manufacture ah huh. they can handle very very large power hmm Power loss is only in wave guide. In wave guide. Right. So we have low power loss, and uh, it's very easy to manufacture. Similarly, they offer the loss is very negligible, and they can handle very large powers. So I told you in the previous session. since it has to carry the microwave energy and microwave energy itself very high power energy it's not like uh, medium wave or hf it's uh, beyond the extended uh, ehf range that's why it has to carry very high energy so it is it 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 is going to handle high power without any problem okay so next we have uh, seen similarly we have seen the types of wave guide also we have circular wave guide rectangular wave guide elliptical shape similarly we have come across with the applications of wave guide any one application scientific instrument alla use martar sir ha then microwave one alla use martar yeah that is on application microwave one also we, we are going to use it antenna dali radar radar communication al use martar so radar communication also uses by wave guides this is sir parabolic this is electronic this is in reflectors also we are going to use wave guides to feed as a feeder to hum feed okay so we have seen the differences also in the last session the differences between the transmission line and wave guides what are the major differences any two difference any two differences yes, sir trans transmission line supports the tem wave and wave guides uh, cannot support the tem waves and bandwidth is not limited in the transmission lines in wave guides uh, bandwidth is limited exactly right bandwidth is limited means it it is going to carry only the microwave range of frequencies we have the cut off region but basically transmission line they carry all kinds of signals that you need to remember okay now let's move on to the next topic that is mode of propagation in wave guides so i already told you we have the two three modes te mode and tm mode which i have discussed now the wave guide propagation modes depends on the operating wavelength polarization 
as well as shape and size of the waveguide. Operating wavelength is totally dependent. You, you need to always remember that wavelength is inversely proportional to the frequency. It's a fixed parameter which is inversely proportional. Whenever we are having high frequency component, automatically wavelength drops, the value of the wavelength downs. Second thing, polarization. The word polarization we have already come across in the previous sum. In analog communication, we use, we had uh, the polarization. Can anybody know what is the polarization? What is meant by polarization? See, polarization refers to or it defined as the orientation of electromagnetic waves in the free space. Basically, any EM wave which is transmitted from the antenna. So, as soon as we feed the energy to the antenna, Antenna converts the electrical signal into electromagnetic waves and those waves, those electric magnetic waves, they are going to travel with respect to the surface of the earth. Whether the EM waves are traveling or propagating parallel to the earth or perpendicular to the earth, the direction in which EM wave gets released from the antenna. Getting the direction of the EM waves with respect to the surface of the earth, how the direction of the EM waves are orienting. So this refers to polarization. If we are having two types of uh, antenna also, polarization, in polarization we have horizontal polarization, vertical polarization. So in horizontal polarization, the antennas are fixed like that. The EM waves are going to be transmitted or released from the antenna in horizontal. That means that the electric field is parallel to the axis of earth, that is the earth surface. In vertical polarization, the electric field strength, the E factor, what we are having, which is perpendicular to the surface of the earth. If it is perpendicular to the surface of the earth, we call it, it as vertically polarized. If it is, the propagation of EM wave is along the earth surface, then we, we used to call these EM waves as vertically polarized waves. So to generate vertically polarized wave as well as horizontally polarized wave, we are going to keep or place or position the antenna in that way. That is, we used to say the antenna is horizontally polarized or antenna is vertically polarized. So here, in microwave energy, we are not sending energy into the free space. We are sending microwave energy to the microwave devices, which carries the, to, to the waveguides, which carries the waves. We have certain and definite media to carry the waves. It is not the free space. Getting? So, in the waveguide, how the waves are going to be polarized? Whether it is along the axis of the waveguide or it is perpendicular to the axis of the waveguide. We have one certain axis. If you are taking a waveguide, whether it is rectangular or it is circular, we have the axis. And if the waves are prop propagating are orienting along the axis of the waveguide, we, we call the waves are horizontal polarized. If the electric field factor is 
vertical to the axis of the waveguide, vertical to the direction of propagation, then that kind of polarization is we call as vertical polarization. Similarly, the propagation also depends on the shape and size of the waveguide. As we have uh, seen the different uh, shapes as well as size, sizes of the waveguides in the previous uh, session. We have circular, we have rectangular, we have elliptical. Different shapes we are having, different size we are having. So all those influence the waveguide propagation or the propagation of waves in the waveguide. Now, each mode is characterized by a cutoff frequency below which the mode cannot exist in the waveguide. If you have the modes, different modes in the operation, you take any, any mode in the waveguide, each and every mode will have minimum frequency and that frequency we call as cutoff frequency. The wave propagation is there in the waveguide only after the cutoff frequency. You can't expect the wave propagation be before the cutoff. So at least the waves should be should should have the cutoff frequency and beyond the limit. So that's why here bandwidth is limited. We have a certain frequency band that can be transmitted over the waveguides. So that is the important thing we need, we need to remember. Now if you come to the different modes, we have uh, three, four modes of the transmission. Earlier we had a little look over the modes. Now let us see that. First and foremost is transverse electromagnetic modes. In transverse electromagnetic mode, neither electric field nor magnetic field are in the direction of propagation. So basically waves carries these two fields, magnetic as well as electric field. That's why we used to say EM wave. E represent electric, M represent magnetic field. Now, these two fields, in any propagation, these two fields are perpendicular to the direction of propagation, then we used to say that this is transverse electromagnetic mode. So that can be understand by in, in the uh, figure. <coughs> if you take the three fingers, I am representing you three fingers. Right. If one is the direction of propagation, here this finger is perpendicular or 90 degree to this direction. I hope you are getting. If you have, we are having three fingers here. So all the three, they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So this is perpendicular to this, this is perpendicular to this, this is perpendicular to this. So if the direction of propagation, direction of electric field vector, direction of magnetic field vector, if they are perpendicular to each other, then that kind of wave propagation we call as transverse electromagnetic waves or tra transverse electromagnetic mode. The second mode is transverse electric mode. As the name itself indicate, when we say TE means electric field vector is perpendicular to the direction. If you have one direction of propagation, the field electric field vector that is E factor is always perpendicular that is transverse to this direction whereas electromagnetic field vector may be 
along the direction of propagation. So here only electric field vector is transverse or rectangular, I mean perpendicular or 90 degree to the direction of propagation. That kind of mode we say that transverse electric mode or T mode. Here not a single field vector is in the direction of propagation. All the field vectors are always perpendicular or transfer to the direction of propagation. These are sometimes called H mode because there is only magnetic field along the direction. E vector or E field electric field is perpendicular but H field is along the direction of propagation that we have to always remember. Now in transverse magnetic field we refer TM mode. In this TM mode see the name itself indicate here transverse. When we, when we have the name transverse it represents the perpendicular or right angle. For whom it is right angle? To the direction of propagation of wave. Direction of propagation of signal. Direction of propagation of energy. To this direction, the magnetic field, no magnetic field in that direction. Magnetic field is always transfer, always perpendicular, always right angle to the direction of propagation. In this case, there might be some sometimes E factor that is electric field is in the direction of propagation. Now we are having sometimes hybrid mode where non-zero electric and magnetic field in the direction of propagation which are we basically we don't use. In waveguides popularly and basically we use two modes of transmission. One mode is TE mode, another mode is TM mode. Is this clear? Yes. Mode yes, sir. Waveguide is clear? Yes, sir. Now we have seen this picture in the previous uh, session also. Actually, this, these are the invisible field factors. It is not that we can have the visual things. Electric field as well as magnetic field theory they have the imagination and they, they are invisible ways neither we see EM waves nor we can see any other waves all the waves are invisible in nature so now here two modes are represented by TE mode as well as TM mode Okay. Now let us see what is meant by TE mode. We have uh, seen transverse electric mode. That means electric field vector which is represented by single lines. These field vectors are perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So here we are having direction. So for the direction of propagation, wave propagation, it is always perpendicular or right angle. So that's why we call this kind of transmission as TE mode. Another we are having TM mode that is transverse magnetic. Here you see the magnetic field vector which is transferred to the direction of propagation whereas we, we can find electric fields are along the direction of propagation. See the 
figure how beautifully it is being represented. So we have the cross sectional weave. If you cut the circular wave guide, if you have the circular wave guide, if, if you cut a quarter piece of that, we can easily weave the TE as well as TM mode. This is the direction of propagation. And here we are having electric field as well as magnetic field. Electric fields here perpendicular to the direction of propagation. In TM mode, it is magnetic field which is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So this is how we are going to get the field factors, magnetic field as well as electric field parameters overview in cross-sectional area. In TEM mode, that is transverse electric and magnetic mode, which is which I represented with the three figures, three fingers. All the three fingers are perpendicular to each other. That means that they are 90 degree to each other. So this mode is basically used in electromagnetic wave propagation. So you take any antenna system, the orientation of EM waves in the free space, the exit point from the antenna. So what are, what are all the waves which are transmitted from the antenna? So if we can see the waves, the waveforms are like this. Here, here you can easily observe. See, this is the direction of propagation which is represented by black mark antenna, sorry, black mark uh, line. Blue line represent electric field vector. Sorry, red line represent electric field vector. Blue line represent magnetic field vector. So this is how the electromagnetic waves are propagated in the free space. And always in TEM mode, all the three parameters, electric field, magnetic field, as well as the direction of propagation, they are always perpendicular to each other. And in this case, both electric and magnetic field is used at the same time. Now another concept you need to clear over here. So how the field patterns are exist in rectangular as well as circular waveguide. Here we are having rectangular waveguide. Here the field is exist, you see the electric field. If you consider this rectangular waveguide, here we are having the base and this is the height of rectangle. So if you take base as A and uh, this height of the rectangle as B, here in T mode, it is, uh, you can uh, have the view in the base we are having field strength of half cycle starting with this point ending at this point we are having half cycle wave which is exist in horizontal direction we don't have any kind of energy in vertical direction if we have energy in horizontal direction then we used to represent by the number you see we have only half wave the only single wave is exist. That's why we name it as 1, TE1. And this 0 represent, we don't have any energy in vertical movement. We have the horizontal movement of wave. We don't have vertical movement. That's why we referred it as TE10. 1 represent one wave 
in horizontal zero represent no energy no wave exist in vertical direction similarly t e two zero in horizontal we are having two complete cycle one complete cycle which is nothing but the two waves so we are having two waves that's why we used to have number two zero represent no energy in vertical direction so here we are having t e three zero one end to another end we are having three waves that's why here the three number has been given this zero represent we don't have any field vector in vertical direction the energy is zero in vertical direction energy exists only in horizontal direction and that energy also represented by 1 2 3 1 represent one single wave 2 represent complete wave that is two half as well as ne positive as well as negative half comprises of two waves similarly here we are having two positive and one negative wave complete three waves are there that's why we name it as 3 0 so that is represented in wave forms te10 we are having electric field vector in horizontal direction in vertical direction we don't have any field field vector or energy this is the top view view of wave guide don't confuse similarly here tm11 tm rep represent transverse magnetic here the magnetic field is perpendicular to the direction of propagation so here we are having one wave in horizontal another wave is in vertical direction in the both direction we are having one complete wave so that you need to remember here also it red line represented e factor blue line sorry represented e factor red line represented magnetic field vector now let us see about the rectangular wave guide is this clear te what is te mode what is how the te10 and te11 is represented how the number has been given that you need to know now let us see the rectangular wave guide so here we are having as i explained the horizontal uh, plates of uh, wave guides are represented by a vertical walls are represented by b here rectangular wave guides are one of the earliest type of transmission line they are used in many applications a lot of components such as isolators detectors attenuators couplers slotted lines they are available for various standard wave guides band between 1 giga to 220 gigahertz this range is comprises of microwave band so this particular wave guide is used as an isolator isolator which separate input as well as output component or input as well as output device and basically isolators are going to be used when we should not have the effect of one stage to the next stage when we don't prefer the first stage will affect the next stage or second stage will affect the first stage we need to place isolator between these two stages so isolator always plays a role of separating 
two stages that we need to remember. The basic functions of isolator is to separate. Physically they are connected. Physically if you see them, you see that all the stages are interconnected. But when we keep isolator between the two stage, in spite of having physical connection, due to the isolator, they are completely other stage. They don't have any influence. Stages that doesn't have any influence on one another. They are called isolators. We have the detectors, radio energy detectors, attenuators to introduce a loss. Similarly, couplers to couple the energy from one point to another point. Slotted lines basically used for matching the impedances. We have already seen in the last semester itself. So all those things they are working for, they are, they are going to work for microwave frequency band. In rectangular waveguides, rectangular mode numbers are designated by two suffix number attached to the mode type. You can see over here, we have the TE mode TEMN or TE TMMN, where M is the number of half wave pattern across the width of the waveguide, N is the number of half wave pattern across the height of waveguide. You can see over here, this is the M represented the number of half wave pattern from this uh, A wall. Similarly, N represent the number of half wave pattern in B wall. If the number of half wave pattern in A wall is 1 and number of half wave pattern in B wall is 0, then we referred as TE10 because we have the half wave pattern in A, A wall and we don't have any half wave pattern or any energy or any electric field in B wall, then B wall is N, the suffix number N is N becomes 0. If field exists, then only we can number these suffixes. So that is how we are going to identify so what, is, what amount of energy is feed, how the energy is propagated. Is this clear? Yes? Is this clear? Yes, sir. Now let's come to the circular waveguide. A circular waveguide is nothing but a cross section. A, it is the circular cross section. The, the waveguide which has circular cross section is called circular waveguide. It supports both T mode as well as TM mode. T mode we are having TE11 is the dominant mode in circular waveguide. What is the dominant mode? Dominant mode is nothing but, so in this particular mode, the signal is having minimum degradation. Simply we just, we are not sending the uh, signal power. What we expect is, as soon as we feed the signal at one end, we expect the same signal of same strength at the other end, with minimum attenuation with minimum degradation, the strength of the signal must be as equal to the strength which is feed at the entry point. In other way, what we can say, the signal strength should be equal at the entry as well as exit point of 
microwave. Of course, we do have little degradation. If we have minimum degradation of signal from the entry point to the exit point, then that kind of signal we call as, we refer as dominant mode. That kind of transmission we call as dominant mode. Now let us understand what is TE11. TE11 refers to here we are having in both direction that is in horizontal as well as vertical direction the field is exist. The two we are having complete one half wave. One half wave pattern in horizontal direction another half wave field pattern in vertical direction. If you have the field energy in both the direction it's not a rectangular shape it is having circular shape. So here we are having one half one complete half wave in one direction horizontal direction another complete half in vertical direction. That's why we call as TE double one. So in this particular mode we have minimum degradation and which we are going to use in circular waveguide. TE most TE double one mode is preferable mode. We are going to use it in circular waveguides. In circular waveguides, the circular modes exist and here M is the number of full wave pattern along with circumference. N is the number of half wave pattern along with diameter. Here we are having one diameter, another is circumference of the circle. Likewise in the rectangular way we had A wall as well as B wall. A wall is represented by M and B wall is represented by suffix N. That's why we used to refer them as TEMN. A wall represent M, B wall represent N. A wall represent horizontal wall of the waveguide. B wall represent the vertical wall of the waveguide. Here in circular waveguide, the suffix M and N is represented as M is the number of full wave pattern along the circumference. The total circumference of the circle, what we are having, the field energy at the circumference of the circle that is the entry point of the waveguide is represented by M and N suffix is nothing but half wave pattern along the diameter starting to ending point if we are having no, n number of half wave patterns here in this particular case we are having one one complete half wave pattern along the diameter that's why we call them as te double one the circular wave is waveguide is easier to manufacture than rectangular waveguide and it is relatively easy to install. It is usually used to connect the horn antenna with the reflector in tracking radars for long distance waveguide transmission above the 10 gigahertz. So basically you, circular waveguides are used in radar system and uh, to feed the horn of a reflector and the Frequency used is above the 10 gigahertz. So these are the points we need to remember with respect to circular waveguides. Now, in the previous slide itself, I told you what is the dominant mode. Why we call them as a dominant mode? I earlier, earlier told you in dominant mode the signal degradation is minimal. Now we are going to get maximum energy the entry as well as exit point energy almost equal to same. Now here it is being defined as the mode with lowest cutoff frequency of all the mode is called the dominant mode. Unlike the transmission line, 
where we have having more and more bandwidth we have that have very limited bandwidth so it has the frequency band we have one set cut off so it should be beyond the cut off frequency before cut off no transmission it will start the transmission only after the cut off so here the mode with lowest cut off frequency the acceptable cut off frequency for which wave guides allows a transmit the wave is called dominant mode between the cut off and next highest mode between the cut off and next highest mode this is the only mode it is possible to transmit which is why we, we are going to describe it as dominant mode i hope you are understanding it between the cut off which is the starting point and next highest mode this is the band where it is possible to transmit possible to transmit means we are having very less degradation we are having very less attenuation we are expecting efficient transmission that particular mode we call as dominant in rectangular wave guide the te10 mode is the dominant mode what about the sir circular wave guide last slide itself we have seen what is the dominant mode in circular wave guide yes come on te11 yeah exactly right te11 in circular mode which is the dominant mode there but in rectangular wave guide it is te10 is the dominant mode and there is a band of frequencies between the dominant mode cut off as well as highest mode cut off and we have a band of frequencies from the starting point to next higher cut off modes in which the wave guide can be operated without possibility of generating spurious mode that means that in this particular mode in this particular mode the transmission is very reliable we are getting reliable transmission from one side to another side reliable means we are not losing the data we are not losing the information we are not losing the signal what amount of minimum degradation happens that can be discarded that is not significant we can accept we can neglect we can discard the amount of degradation happens in dominant mode so that's why we basically operate the wave guide in dominant mode because we expect efficient transmission so that we need to remember the highest next highest cut off modes are t20 which we have seen in rectang rectangular wave guide two complete halves one complete cycle in horizontal walls and zero energy or zero electric field in vertical walls that is b wall of rectangular wave guide which we call as t20 t20 the next higher cut off modes are t20 at exactly twice the te10 and te101 which is also twice the 10 if the wave guide use has commonly used aspect ratio of 2 is to 1 this is the commonly used aspect that means in rectangular wave guide the horizontal we should have double of the vertical energy if we are having horizontal one then vertical should be zero 
if you are having horizontal 2 vertical should be 1 this we call as aspect ratio the lowest cut off tm mode is tm 1 1 which is the dominant mode in 2 is to 1 waveguides so lowest cut off means that is the starting point of transmission or starting point of dominant mode in waveguide transmission i hope you understood this so this is all about dominant mode in rectangular waveguides is there any doubt is this clear yes sir now this is the team who developed this particular uh, material for you people so we have the content developers of three content developers myself bakesh v kapsak of harapnalli he is the senior grade lecturer and shuraju he is a lecturer in devdur polytechnic college so our subject expert are the lokesh hg he is the hod of gpt nagmangla Similarly, our moderator Anita HT ma'am, she is selection grade lecturer in Women's Polytechnic Bangalore. Now for the today's discussion, we have a multiple choice question. First multiple choice question is, waveguide propagation modes depends on first answer wavelength second polarization third shape and size of waveguide fourth all the above which is the correct answer yes come on is this clear Is this clear? Yes. Answer me. I am expecting answer from you. The answer for that is all the above. Waveguide propagation modes depends on wavelength, polarization and shape and size of waveguide. Second question is, T modes have no dash field in the direction of propagation. Electric, magnetic, none of the above, all the above. Answer please. Now the choice two question T modes have no electric field in the direction of propagation. Third question is, in rectangular waveguide, TEMN mode where M is the number of dash wave pattern across the width of waveguide. Full wave, half wave, quarter wave and fourth is none of the above. Full wave. Full wave, sir. Full wave. Rectangular wave. 
m is represented full wave let us see that yes sir half wave i already told you one complete wave comprises of two half waves one rectangular wave guide alli one complete wave complete adre the two half waves agutte so we are going to take the radiation in terms of half waves not full wave question 4 the dominant mode in rectangular wave guide is dominant mode in rectangular wave guide t10 t01 t10 sir 10 option a option a good correct next question dominant mode in circular wave guide ऑप्शन डी टी वन वन सर वन गुड राइट द मोड विथ लोएस्ट कट ऑफ फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ ऑल द मोड्स इज कॉल्ड डोमिनेंट मोड डोमिनेंट मोड डोमिनेंट मोड सर राइट थैंक यू will be having will inform you the next session and uh, you can collect the material which i have sent on uh, whatsapp group also you can download the yes. material and you can prepare your notes okay yes sir yes sir okay, okay.